Hey, on this week of This is Gravel, we've got frozen toes and bivvies. Oh my. We've got casually signing up for the DK. Super cash. Super casually signing up for the DK. We've got gift buying for your sweeties. Oh yeah. And we've got some Q&A. We do. Level it off of social media. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to This Is Gravel. As always, I am still Bobby Thompson. Still, still, to this day. Still, I'm waiting for the name to be changed, super cash, but it hasn't officially <laughs> happened yet. So, Bobby it's Thompson with that. me is Leland Danes. Thank you for watching. And uh, Leland, as always, as always, how many episodes have we done? Matt? I want to tally. Thousands. Put we that did up. thousands upon <laughs> thousands of episodes. Leland, what's happening? Well, I've uh, been riding my fat bike a little bit. Holy well, God. it's set up plus size. Let's not get carried away. But oh, we've, okay. we've uh, got some trail edition in town, and uh, so I've been enjoying that. Uh, it, here a couple lately. extra miles of trail. Couple, couple extra of... miles, which seems like an eternity here in Emporia, where we don't have miles and miles of trails, but we have gravel roads, right? That's right. So, That's right. Yeah. So I've been out on my bike doing cool. some of that. I like it. Well, tell me next to me. Well, I'll bring my well, okay, my then. bike out. So. All right. Perfect. We got a date. There it is. We have a date. Matt, you want to come join us? You need a fat bike. I, I do need a fat bike. Did we just have Global Fat Bike Day? We did. We were already off topic. I know it. I know. All right. What have you been up to? There we go. Everyone I'm trying to talk until you ask the question. <coughs> uh, okay. What have I been up to? You could just pause and take a breath and allow me to say something. That would. <clears throat> they don't pay me to take breaths. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they pay me to talk. All right. <laughs> Who's they and what's this pay? <laughs> All right. What have you been up to, Bobby? What Excuse me. Super to? cash. Super cash. Super cash. Um, not much, actually. I haven't been yeah. running a whole lot. But here's the deal. Here's why. Um, because I rode a whole lot the, in the entire year. So I've been taking a little bit off. Sure. However, I'm well, getting downtime. geared up already uh, for a new season of gravel. I'll actually start in doing some, uh, you know, I'd like to get eight, eight hours of riding in starting now, starting next week and just kind of build on that for next season. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and head down to, you know, ride in Texas in late January. So I'm getting geared nice. up. Nice. Getting geared up. Going to spend a little time down south. Right. Right. This winter. Right. Well, Lovely. It's, it's, it's holiday time. It's family time right now. It so, is. It so. is. It is. Can you believe that we're going to ask really, actually ask Matt? What's uh, up he likes having that camera on him. Matt, what have you been up to? Well, this weekend we went out and we actually went bike packing. Uh, me and Ben loaded up, and uh, a couple companies sent us some bivvies to try out. I don't know if you guys have ever used a bivvy before, but uh, we tried that out over the weekend, and uh, yeah, that was uh, our experience. It was just a short ride, about eight miles each way. But... Did you put the bivvy inside the tent? Oh, no. It was outside. <laughs> there, there was no tent. The bivvy was the tent. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's cold out there. Bike packing in December. I I not only had a new bivy, I had a new liner yeah. in the bag. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not going to get that cold. It was supposed to be 40 or something. Yeah. Long story short, we woke up and it was 28 degrees, and that was not when we should have woken up for the night. Right, because then you're up to and you're staying awake. Yeah. You guys need to join us next July for our summer bike packing series. Okay, I like some. Where you won't need anything but a pad to sleep on the ground. <laughs> yeah, that sounds much more fun. <laughs> Sleeping pad and underwear. Boom. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, locally, we've had some fun here late, lately, right? Yes. We've had something uh, might have come up with Dirty Kansas. Well, correct? registration is open uh, for those that uh, are not in the know already. Mm -hmm. um, the format has changed a little bit, and uh, Matt and I actually had a chance to sit down and address some, uh, some of the finer points of that was, registration. That was good of you and Matt to do. Yes, it let's, was. So let's see what you guys had to say. 
So Dirty Cans, a registration has changed if you've been following along. We have moved to a random selection process, better known as a lottery. Um, in years past, it has just been an open registration, meaning we set a date and a time, and uh, you were expected to log on to your computer at that time and get yourself signed up. Well, that had worked for the first 11 years of the existence of Dirty Cans, but last year, uh, so this uh, back in January of 2017, that uh, model no longer worked. We had twice as many people um, trying to get spots uh, that were available. So um, it created uh, real problems. There were server uh, connection problems and uh, timing out issues. And so uh, folks were not having a, a good experience, right? Because you could have been there on the right date at the right time, all logged in, ready to go. And then the servers were just overwhelmed and couldn't hold the number of people. And so it worked for some, uh, it didn't work for others and so that's not a process that uh, we thought would continue to work into the future so we changed to this lottery and there's a lot of benefits to that. One, it slows the process down a little bit. Now you don't have to be at a certain place at a certain time connected to the internet on a computer or your phone, right? You've got uh, from December 1st, uh, which was last Friday, registration opened up to December 16th to put your name in the hat. So it's a lot more relaxed on the user end. You've got some time. Uh, I know there's some uncertainty with that because even though you've put your name in, you don't know if you're in the event. Um, but the reality is, is even in the old way, you didn't know by signing up if if you were in because we had lots of people who thought they went through the process yet they got kicked out um, booted out and things like that so um, to say that that's a negative that part's not a change you still uh, you've got to wait a little bit longer to know that you're in but um, that's how that works so we'll close on December 16th and then we will announce January 13th that gives us some time to uh, sort through the recipients and the, all the entries and um, make the selection process and then announce on January 13th which is the same second Saturday in January that we used to always hold registration. So the timing of that really hasn't changed as far as when you know that you're into the event. By and large, I mean, we really view this as a positive change for registration moving forward. Again, it, it provides a, a lot more relaxed atmosphere for the user to get signed up. Um, it's a lot more fair and equitable. Um, it's, it's essentially the same. It, prior, the computers and the servers basically made a random selection, and, and now we're kind of taking control of that a little bit more, and, and that allows us to take some liberties with supporting um, those that have been repeat uh, supporters of Dirty Kanza and those in the local community that have uh, backed this event so wonderfully and made it what it is today and helped us uh, create a world premiere event. So um, by and large, this is vastly um, a more positive change, and hopefully you will agree, and hopefully you're getting your name in there if you haven't done so yet, get yourself signed up. Go to dirtykanza.com, big banner right on the home page, uh, or you can visit the registration tab from the menu and, and read up on the registration process before uh, getting your name tossed in there. Um, but hopefully enjoy it. And uh, on top of all that, we can promise that 2018 promises to, of course, be the best Dirty Kanza yet. Um, we are hard at work, always uh, striving to uh, make this an, an unforgettable life enriching experience and we've got some things that we think are going to blow you away so hopefully uh, you get signed up and we'll see you here next june thank you very informative thanks very for taking your time with us and if you still have questions uh, feel free to reach out to us go to dirtykanza.com contact us uh, right up top there when he says us he's t not t there you go he's talking about <laughs> him so um okay i got this hold on hold on matt ready DK entry would make such a nice Christmas gift, wouldn't it? It would. What other things might make nice Christmas gifts? I don't know, but One Take Blake would like to show us next. Hey, this is Adam from Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company. Wanted to give you a few ideas this year for some last minute gifts for the cyclist in your life. A great stocking stuffer is nutritional items. Uh, they're consumable and get used up and a cyclist is always going to need more. Look for a wrapper lying around to pick out their favorite flavor. Another great idea for any cyclist are cycling specific socks. These feature some compression qualities and wicking materials to keep their feet dry and feeling good. For your active winter cyclist, gloves and warmers of all kinds are necessity and can extend their riding season. Of course, supporting your local bike shop with gift ideas like hoodies, hats, and t-shirts that are branded are always a great idea.
And of course, if you can't figure it out, gift cards are available in any denomination and work on anything in the store. Come on down to Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company and we can help you figure out the gifts for this season. Well, as always, a big old thank you to One Take Blake. And it seems uh, we've been sending our wish list to the wrong person, the wrong bearded person. So if you really want to get what you want, send it down to Adam Blake at Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company. And don't forget those support crew people in your lives who take care of you at all of these gravel events, right? Very important. Mm -hmm. And plus, mm -hmm. if you buy them stuff that they're not going to use, you get to use it. Yes, so. precisely. Right, exactly. So. I'm still pretty proud of my segue. I'm sorry. Well, uh, what time is it now? It is Q&A uh, time. Ah! No enthusiasm whatsoever. You don't like it, Q&A time? It's my favorite. Yeah, I know. Ready? Okay, oh, here we go. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Here we go. I've had a lot of coffee today. Oh, okay. Okay. With lots of new events popping up. There's a lot of gravel rides out there. Gravel events. Good point. How do you decide which to try? Well, um, my criteria is one of quantity over quality, I will admit. Um, if you haven't gathered by now, my time's pretty limited. And so I hone in on just a few events each year. And I've done that for a few years now. And uh, I love to ride around locally and get my training in, for example, and then focus all my eggs in just a few baskets, if you will. That's just my approach. But I look for events that have a good atmosphere. Um, I try new things. I'm kind of, uh, I like to do an event for a couple times, two or three years. Um, but after that, I like to go see what else is out there and ride in new landscapes. So um, new and different, something uh, intriguing about the event. There's some that are out there where you race a train. Um, there's a couple of these, and the oh, idea just events? intrigues me. Um, no, it was a road event down in Oklahoma. Really? And, uh, yeah, you've got to go down and back and beat the train that moves at about 10 miles per hour, and you've got to do 20 and change or so. See? You're intrigued, I, aren't I'm you? I'm intrigued by that one. It's got a catch. That's what I look for. Huh. What about you? What are you after? I don't know. i got this train thing <laughs> in my head now. I'm going to have to go look up the train. No, you know, it's the same way. I, I, I tend to... Uh, go, go to new events, new experiences, meet new people, and then I want to go back for a couple of years because I've made new friends, blah, blah, blah. But eventually, uh, it's, it's time for a new experience. And this year, I'm going to try to do three or four new rides. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The criteria for those rides is uh, proximity to where I live. I don't want to go too far away. You know, just maybe one long, long event, you know. Um, and the other ones, uh, it's not so much the amount of people that go to the events. It's, uh, it's have I ridden in that area before. So, yeah. So new places. Right, new places. My turn, Bobby. What is your goal by using indoor trainers? Oh. <laughs> that timed out perfect, timed didn't it? Can of worms on this one. <laughs> I, I love Captain, my indoor trainer. Captain Zwift. Yeah, I love Zwift. Uh, I love more indoor training. What are the okay? So let's talk about winter time. Let's talk about riding mm -hmm. during the winter. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I'm going to go out riding with a group of friends, or if I'm just going to go out, if I just want to be on the bike, then I'll I'll gear up and I'll go outside. Mm -hmm. If I'm inside riding, it's for a specific purpose. Um, I have a set of intervals that I want to do. I do not like to do set intervals outside in the cold. Um, I don't like gearing up for it. You're all sweaty, and then you're back in. You're not enjoying the ride because you're doing a mm -hmm. set of intervals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I'm going to go ride, I go outside. Just chill and ride, hop on the fat bike, that kind of thing. So indoors intervals. Short amount of time, maximum amount of effort. I like it. Yeah, uh, mine would be uh, similar reasons. Um, not just uh, the reasons that you listed, but the trainer gives you a controlled environment with which to do those intervals, which sometimes can be nice. If you need to do um, 10 by 2 power intervals, for example, boy, you can really measure that out on a trainer and not have to worry about hitting a power interval on a downhill, right, or that kind of thing. So it does give you a controlled environment. And also just the sheer consistency of it. Yeah, this is a bit of a downtime for most of us, unless you're getting into the cross season. But um, for most of us, we like to consider this some downtime, but downtime doesn't mean we don't ride, period. And so you still need to be maintaining a little bit of consistency. So not a um, ton of volume if you don't want, but you do need to be riding. And even if it is an hour on the trainer, that's better than not doing anything at all. So the trainer does give you one less excuse. Um, you can't say, well, I've got no opportunity to ride because the weather's bad. Well, with a $150 trainer, you could be riding uh, indoors all winter long and keeping that fitness fresh for when you are ready to start hitting it even harder and Absolutely. begin the prep. And with the slate of gravel rides getting longer and longer and stretching longer and longer mm -hmm. you don't really have that three month of, yeah yeah you really want to right. hit the year start going absolutely all right land run comes up quick there in march doesn't it 
Things are very quick. All right, number three. Do you have any favorite cycling documentary films you like to watch? Oh, yes. Good. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let me state a couple obvious ones. Um, Salsa did a 15-minute mini-documentary on Race the Sun, yes, featuring Dirty Kanza. That one's fantastic. Um, this year, we also got to see uh, Blood Road, which mm -hmm. was um, less a cycling movie and just a human story, which was phenomenal. But if I really wanted to, to nail down a, a favorite, mm -hmm. I absolutely love the 1970s films uh, revolving around the Giro d'Italia and a, a Sunday in Hell, Perry Roubaix, Eddie Merckx. Not a lot of talking, just old school footage, and it's good stuff. Check it out, A Sunday in Hell. Nice. Yeah, good stuff. I typically take my Sunday afternoons and watch um, old reruns of producer Matt filming me. <laughs> So. Okay. And just for clarification, real quick, Blood Road is free on the Red Bull app through the end of December. Ah, so that's right. That's right. Make sure you check it out there. Cool. Download the uh, Red Bull app for free. I love that thing, Red Bull TV. It's amazing. Um, okay. Uh, lastly, here, Bobby, do you have any goals for 2018? And if the answer is yes, I presume the follow-up question is, what are they? What are they? Travel. Go to new places. See new yeah. things. Same, it is, same as it is about every year. So ride as hard as I can and have fun afterwards. Um, you know, last year, the biggest goal was at the DK was to beat the sun and finish for the fifth time. And I did both those. So going into this year, just be, have fun at the races. I really don't have any dedicated goals as of yet. So, nice. Yeah. Well, uh, for 2018, if, if you guys thought I was pretty out of touch in 2017. My big goal for 2018 is to simply be half the father that Bobby is here. <laughs> if I can be half of that, I'll be doing okay as uh, Christina and I are expecting our first little one in March. Absolutely. So that's awesome. That is life goal for the rest of my yeah, existence. Life will, change, <laughs> so. life will change for the yeah. better, that's for sure. Yeah. But I will say um, I do intend on showing this little one a life, an active lifestyle, and so I would like to make a return to Salsa Ride Camp in 2018. Yeah. With the little one. So, yeah. And I'd like to uh, get some of my friends, some more friends going up with us to that one. An, an amazing event. Producer Matt says, yes, pick me, pick me. <laughs> so put Salsa Ride Camp on your uh, objectives for 2018 for sure. Okay. That's all. That's all? That's all I've got. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, as always. Do we have some social media to share? Come on, Matt. Throw, throw it up there, Matt. Matt says yes. Producer Matt says yes. So we'll I love seeing the Producer pictures. Matt in social media. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you all. Hey, Bobby and Leland. Thank you for another great episode of This is Gravel. Let's finish up today with social media. If you aren't following along already, make sure you're checking out our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. First up, we've got Amy Lean out on her Fargo, replaced the gravel dust for the Christmas lights, riding in the Mayor's Lighted Christmas Parade in Manhattan, Kansas. Barbara was out on the Wolf Road Loop in Osage County, Oklahoma. Charlie went and did the Ruts and Guts Chicken Bourbon Waffle Ride near Tulsa, Oklahoma. Chris went out on a Munster Cross Ride near Lake of the Ozarks. Donald was out adventuring the gravel roads, B roads, fire roads, and somewhat trails in the area around the ghost town of Meganese, a deserted mining town in the area of north central Minnesota. Eric did a 30 mile ride around central Iowa. Gary went out on the Rock Island Trail on his new single speed niner bike built by Adam over at Gravel City and Adventure and Supply Company. The Rock Island Trail sure looks like a fun place to check out. Greg went out on his fat bike during Global Fat Bike Day. Isaac was out riding the trails at Camp Alexander here around Emporia. Jacob went out and did 43 miles of the red dirt in Oklahoma on his Via. Matt Acker is out conquering the Baja Divide. Sarah went over to Belgium to watch cyclocross. They've been riding around the country since, says it's been really amazing. Todd went and did the Iceman's Challenge in Waco, Texas. Thank you to everybody that's been submitting photos to us using the hashtag ThisIsGravel. Keep them coming. We look forward to another great series of shows starting in January for 2018. Thank you.